To the ancient Egyptians, the Hamadrius was known as the sacred baboon. In Arabia, the people called them desert monkeys, a fitting name given that they are the only species of primate living in this arid land, where annual rainfall can be less than 100 millimeters. Hamadrius baboons have a wide distribution that includes the Horn of Africa, that is Eritrea, Ethiopia and Somalia, as well as Arabia from Yemen up to the southwestern Saudi Arabia. Field studies conducted in 1988 estimated baboon numbers in Saudi Arabia to be as high as 250 to 350,000 in the areas between the south of the city of Medina down to Yemen. One of the key questions surrounding the Hamadrius baboon concerns the timing of the expansion of the species into Arabia and its isolation from African populations. The National Commission for Wildlife Conservation and Development, NCWCD, is the government agency responsible for wildlife protection and management within Saudi Arabia. Since 1987, the NCWCD has supported research on a number of aspects of baboon ecology, particularly those relating to commensalism, the sharing of resources between humans and baboons. Most recently, the NCWCD started cooperative studies with teams of scientists from Japan. The social structure of Hamadrius baboons differs from that of the other African baboons in some important respects. Hamadrius are found in one male units, which are family groups consisting of one adult male and on average between one and four females and their offspring. Several families may come together as a clan when searching for food. A congregation of several clans is called a band and bands themselves may combine at sleeping sites to form a troop. Troops can contain as many as 700 individual baboons. Grooming behavior is the most commonly observed of a range of social behaviors occupying up to 13% of the baboon's daily activity. Activity budget analysis show that aggressive behaviors appear to be minimized to the lowest levels necessary to maintain a stable social structure. The study of Hamadrius baboons in Saudi Arabia has two parts. One involves trapping of baboons and the collection of blood samples for genetic analysis to test some ideas about the origin of Hamadrius in Arabia. The other part is an observational study of baboon social and feeding behaviors and an investigation of the factors that govern the distribution of Hamadris in the Arabian Peninsula. Two study sites have been selected, Wadi Dahban on the Tahama coastal plain and Wadi Lia near the city of Taif. Between the foothills of the western Saramat Mountains and the Red Sea lies the Tahama coastal plain ranging between 40 to 70 kilometers in width. One of the features of the Tahama coastline is the stand of mangrove forests. 
These provide an important habitat for a large variety of marine life and for migrant birds. Mangroves also serve to protect the coastline from erosion. Although characterized as a flat land, there is a unique portion of the Tahama Plain where the ancient lava flows of the mountains reach down to the sea, and both freshwater and baboon sleeping sites are present in one place. This section is located on the Asir coast. Only in this region can the Hermadrius baboons be found beside the coast. Wadi habitats occur where seasonal water flows down towards the sea. These watercourses have rich soils and provide good land for the traditional agriculture of the region. In Wadi Dahban, in the Asir, palm trees are widely grown and palm trees dot the landscape. Of the 3,400 palm tree species distributed throughout the world's hot regions, only four grow wild in Saudi Arabia. Haifaina thebaika is one of these, known locally as Doom. Palm trees raise their trunks high into the sky to allow the wind to carry spores from male to female trees. Baboons feed on these fruits as well as on the palm's dates and seeds. Searching for baboons in Wadi Dahban is like detective work. During the first survey of the site, Professor Shotake, Dr. Yamani and Ahmed Bouk have located baboon footprints and are tracking them to try and find the baboon's sleeping site. This will allow them to investigate the baboon's daily patterns of movement and activity and to be able to trap some animals for blood sampling and later genetic analysis. This wadi lies about 400 kilometers south of Taif, in the western foothills of the Sarawat Mountains. The area receives up to 650 millimeters of rain annually, flowing down from the mountain peaks of the Sarawat. The deep, steep rocks on either side of the wadi provide suitable sleeping sites for baboons. The water that runs in the middle of the wadi is another key factor that allows the baboons to be resident here. Troops of baboons may range widely in search of food throughout the course of a single day, but must remain within about 15 kilometers of their fresh water supply. The joint Saudi-Japan baboon study has been running for four years, during which time researchers have built up a comprehensive picture of the ecology and social structure of Hamadrius baboons under the arid conditions of the Arabian Peninsula.
منام هنا بالحي بعد عند الواجي ما المنام هذه هو هذه هو والله عينها لك ما تفرس هذه الحين حتى discussions with local residents provide some clues as to the daily movements of the baboons in the region. This will help the team to find a suitable location in which to set up the trap. With plenty of daylight left, they decide to explore further up the wadi. The correct placement of the trap is critical to the success of the expedition. The water flows down the wadi to a large dam that was built three years ago by the Ministry of Agriculture to support the local farmers. The dam holds more than two million cubic meters of accumulated rainwater. The water that flows from behind the dam has formed a small wetland and has become a gathering point for baboons and for a number of resident and migrant bird species. Flash flooding has brought with it some of the nine species of freshwater fish found in Arabia. Hammercop, spoonbill, reef heron and grey heron are just some of the species visiting the area of the dam. The many types of fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals and insects found here are evidence of the richness of the Tahama's wadis. A large lake has been formed behind the dam, flooding a small settlement that once nestled in the foothills of the Sarawat Mountains. It is now time for the team to erect the cage trap along the path used by the baboons when they move between the sleeping site and their feeding sites. The plan is to trap some baboons in order to take blood samples. That's it for today. Let's hope that tomorrow some baboons will enter the cage. Before sunrise, the research team makes final adjustments to the trap and checks the rope that will release the gate when the baboons are inside. Bread and peanuts are used as bait. Peanuts are especially useful as the baboons must pause inside the trap to remove the shells. This method has been used with good success in the past.
in the early morning as the sun first rises from behind the Sarawat Mountains. The team is ready to trap some baboons. The sun's rays slowly dissipate the mist, while scorpions scurry back to their burrows after a long night of foraging. Professor Shotake and Dr. Yamani use peanuts to attract the baboons to the trap site, while Ahmed stays hidden, ready to release the trap's gate at the right moment. Food is also placed around the trapping area to reduce aggression. The trick is to lure as many baboons as possible inside the trap without causing too much crowding and increased fighting around the trapping site. Trapping of commensal baboons in and around towns is easier and faster than trapping wild baboons, which are much more alert and wary. But these wild baboons are keen to get at the peanuts, and these will keep them busy in the trap. This is the first time the research team has tried to collect blood samples from coastal baboons. Baboons will hold large quantities of peanuts in their cheeks to save time as they forage. The dominant adult males, which may reach double the weight of the adult females, generally have first access to any food. Gradually, more members of the wild troop cautiously approach the trap. The study requires that blood samples are collected from Hamadrias baboons throughout their range in Saudi Arabia. A total of eight trapping sites have been selected between the border of Yemen in the south to near the city of Medina in the north. Blood samples have already been collected from seven of these sites and are now required from only one more locality, this coastal site. The gate shuts and some baboons have been trapped inside. The baboons outside can sometimes attack the cage to try and release their family members. The research team quickly returns to the cage to keep the free baboons away. The cage is covered to prevent contact between the two groups and thereby reduce tension. An air-powered dart containing the drug ketamine is used to anesthetize the baboons so that the blood samples can be taken. Individuals are weighed and their sex and age are recorded. Then ear tags are attached 
before the 10 cubic centimeters blood samples are drawn and placed in a special buffer solution. Professor Schotteke needs to be able to analyze at least 10 blood samples from each location in order to test his hypothesis relating to the geographical isolation of Hamadrius baboons. Our hypothesis is that the original point of origin of the Hemadryas baboon was within the Arabian Peninsula. Due to specific characteristics of Hemadryas baboon morphology and social structure, we can assume that a long period of isolation was necessary for their evolution. However, it is not possible to locate a suitably geographically isolated area in the African continent. In addition, we found that Arabian Hemadryas baboons have two specific genes, which Anubis baboons living in Ethiopia also possess, but which pure Ethiopian Hemadryas baboons have lost through founder effects. Accordingly, we could suppose that the common ancestor of Hemadryas and Anubis baboons migrated via land bridges from Africa to the Arabian Peninsula sometime before 400,000 years ago. Subsequently, Hemadryas baboons evolved their distinct characteristics during a long period of isolation. More recently, possibly during the last period of glaciation, about 20,000 years ago, a small group of Hemadryas migrated from the Arabian Peninsula to Africa and expanded into the areas of modern-day Somalia, Ethiopia, and Eritrea. In order to test these hypotheses, we are collecting blood samples from Arabian Hemadryas baboons at several sites in Saudi Arabia and screening microsatellite DNA and mitochondrial DNA sequences in order to make comparisons with samples from pure Ethiopian Hemadryas baboons. The city of Taif is located on the top of Mount Gazwan, in the northern part of the Sarawat mountain range. The dam at Wadi Lia, the most famous of Taif's wadis, receives rainfall runoff from the eastern side of the Sarawat. The dam's lake and the surrounding mountains form suitable habitat for baboons. Acacia trees dominate the eastern areas of the Sarawat. Some of them have been drowned by the dam's waters. Others line the banks on both sides of the lake. In the early morning, more than 300 baboons move out from their sleeping sites and along the lake shore. The selection of suitable resting and feeding areas is critical to the survival of large baboon troops in such arid areas. Members of a troop will adopt characteristic behaviors when moving between sites. They tend to group together, following the dominant males. The baboons will stay on defined pathways and move quickly without pausing or foraging. These behaviors are designed to minimize the risks of predation that could face lone baboons. The 
baboons hurry to forage from the rubbish bins in the nearby picnic grounds before the park staff arrives to chase them away, and before other groups arrive to make use of the easy pickings. Social behaviours are reduced at feeding sites when baboons are searching for food. Feeding from handouts can occupy up to 15% of the time spent by commensal baboon groups, whereas the time spent feeding on natural foods is reduced to only 3%. The Wadilia baboons spend over 30% of their time moving between sites, nearly a quarter of their time feeding and around 20% resting. After a brief period of feeding, the baboons move to the high rocks to rest. At this time, more social behaviours can be observed. Juvenile baboons, less than three years old, spend time playing while the adults are resting. Playing behaviours include wrestling, mock fighting, submissive behaviours and mutual grooming. This play is important for the development of the physical skills and social behaviours they will use as adults. A dominant adult male reacts to the presence of a passing female, who then turns and adopts a submissive posture. The adults change their positions on the rocks following the shade in order to reduce water loss in the dry air. During this time of the day, they can often be seen mating, a behaviour which rarely occurs outside the strictly maintained family groups. Crowding, however, may result in some females being able to break free of the family group and make contact with other males. The dominant male will try to detain and control females that are in reproductive condition by grabbing their tails. This tail-catching behaviour is common in the large commensal groups but absent in the wild groups. That's maybe because commensal groups with their easy access to human food grow larger in number and become more crowded. The dominant males must therefore be more vigilant if they want to prevent their females from straying too far. In the early afternoon, the troop starts to return to the hills surrounding the wadi, so as to reach their safe sleeping sites well before dark. The team must follow the path taken by the baboons up to the rocky gully in order to record their behaviour as part of the research programme. There is evidence that baboons have passed through this area. They have fed on Indigofera spinosa roots, which they must dig to reach. The other one, they, they removed it. They eat the grasshopper, and that's what is left. They also feed on insects and other invertebrates, such as this grasshopper.
As the baboons move back to their sleeping site, they forage on wild plants. The Wadi Lia troop, although feeding regularly from the rubbish in the park, still obtain a significant proportion of their food from the wild. Because acacia trees are dominant in this habitat, the baboons commonly feed on their flowers, fruits, leaves and also the barks, which are rich in minerals. This feeding pressure, concentrated on the lower branches of the acacia, will stimulate the tree to grow faster. There are 17 species of acacia in Saudi Arabia, occupying habitats ranging from the coast and inland to the central deserts. The small leaves and thorns of the acacia are an adaptation to the dry environment. The acacia fruits form a valuable source of food for many wild animal species, as well as a supplementary fodder for domestic livestock. Away from areas of human disturbance, more social behavior can be seen, such as mating and also mutual grooming, which is the dominant behavior. Females sitting feed the cashew sack flowers. Two females sitting rest, female sitting groom, female sitting. Records of activity are made for five minutes every 15 minutes, from sunrise to sunset, in order to compile an activity budget for the group. This, along with knowledge of the sleeping sites and home range, and the degree to which the baboons are reliant on handouts or on natural foraging areas, is necessary if the impacts of humans are to be reduced. Female two year, three year. Subadult male, move, sitting of female, female sitting, groom two year sitting, female sitting, feed on acacia. By understanding how and why baboons move about their territory, it may be possible to reduce potentially harmful interactions between baboons and people for the benefit of both. Two, two years, three years, three years. Although the behavioral ecology studies are still underway, they have already provided valuable information about how the baboons apportion their time throughout the day. To record the behavior of individual Hamadrius baboons in the field, colored plastic ear tags are fitted to those animals that have been trapped. This allows researchers to recognize individual baboons and to assess such features as the social stability of baboon groups. The sex, age, weight and family relationships and members are known for all tagged individuals. Individuals are recognizable by the color of the tags or because only limited colors are available by whether the tags are in the right or left ear. Sometimes tags can be lost when the ear is torn during fighting. However, other tags can remain securely attached for several years, allowing long-term studies.
During this afternoon period, the movements of the troop are much more leisurely than in the morning rush to get to the feeding area. At this time, much more social behavior can be seen as the baboons move slowly back towards the sleeping site. The research team continues to climb up the steep slopes of the mountain. They eventually reach the peak and are able to get the best view possible of the baboons and their sleeping sites in the rugged slopes above the lake, as well as the lake itself and the surrounding lands. Lea Dam was established 20 years ago to provide fresh water for the surrounding district. Baboons are more vulnerable when in their sleeping sites and are extremely wary of any form of disturbance. If the researchers approach the area too closely, there is a good chance that the baboons will move to a new site. From up on the hill, the researchers can maintain a safe distance and the baboons will not feel threatened. From the high vantage point, it's relatively easy for the team to observe the site. Before the sun leaves the Sarawak Mountains, the baboons return to their sleeping site in the rocks and bushes just above the lake. Now, as in the morning, they hurry in groups, clambering down the steep slopes. Other groups return from foraging sites around the lake edge. In the last hour of light, the baboons take a final drink from the lake. They climb out along low acacia branches, using them as bridges to gain access to the water where the shore is steep. At last, they make their way into the rocks to find a secure position in which to spend the night. This spectacular sight in the Sarawat Mountains holds the two important factors which govern baboon distribution in Saudi Arabia. Sleeping sites on steep rocks and the availability of fresh water. The combination of these two features is missing as are the baboons throughout most of the Tahama lowlands and from the desert fringes of the eastern Sarawat. The eastern Sarawat has sleeping sites, but no water. Whereas the Tahama has water, but lacks sleeping sites in all areas but Wadi Dahban. 
With the sun below the top of the mountain, the baboons locate secure and comfortable sleeping positions in the rocks. The search will go on to unravel the secrets of the origin of the Arabian Hamadrias baboon, as well as to try and better understand their social organization and their adaptations to this harsh but beautiful environment. Shh.